And how did you become involved with the church in China? Well, during that visit to China, naturally I visited the Catholic Church, which was open, a South Cathedral, or Nantang as it was called. And when I went into the church, I met an old priest, and he said to me, Ego som sacerdos, Ego Petros. Now, fortunately, I was able to say to him, Ego som sacerdos, Ego Eduardos. <laughs> And then we had, he had a little English and he had survived all the, um, all the uh, persecution during the Cultural Revolution and during the 50s. And that was just extraordinary to listen to. Then oh, I met the new bishop of Beijing, the new guy who was to become bishop of Beijing. And he offered me an opportunity for an interview, which I did. And I asked him, how was he going to become bishop without the approval of the Holy Father? <laughs> And he, with a nice smile and through the translator, he just simply said, uh, well, he said there was a man called Ambrose in Milan who was applauded into the job of being a bishop. I dropped any further questions about approval of the Holy See for bishops. We met again and I concelebrated with him and then I met some of the younger clergy there and that began a connection with the Catholic Church in Beijing. From there, in the 80s then, I came a number of times and continued to meet people there. In the 90s, when I was in Taiwan, I came back again and met new people there who broadened my horizon about the church and what happened to it during the time of Mao in the 50s and during the Cultural Revolution. And then, um, in the late 90s, I was invited to work with a group here in London sending teachers to China. And that then, we expanded into what I'm working with today, which is a body called Cultural Exchange with China. And the main purpose of that is to build bridges between the Catholic Church of Britain and the Catholic Church of China.